double down. What? Regardless of age, culture, or background, this is one popular pastime that humans will always go to for a good time. But well, what should I need? Let me show you. Ace of spades. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 card games. For this list, we're taking a look at traditional card games that you can play using a conventional deck of playing cards, rather than a specially printed deck. Sorry, Uno, we think you're fun too. Now the river was low and the boat wouldn't go, so we took out the you know, you know? Number 10, Crazy Eights. All you need is a deck of cards and a friend to play the fun game of Crazy Eights. This card game falls into the category of a shedding game, where the objective is to be the first player to get rid of all your cards. That means that players try to match the rank or suit of the top card of the discard pile, or failing that, put down an eight. If you play an eight, you can um, call the suit that should be used. If they do not have any of these, they must take cards from the stockpile until they get a card they can play. Make the game Crazy Jacks by making Jacks or any other card wild. With many variations to this game existing under many different names, including Screw Your Neighbor, anywhere from two to seven people can join in on a hand of this crazy fun. It's a great game for kids learning how to play card games for the first time. Number nine, Spades. This all-American game with Depression-era roots became popular during World War II as soldiers from its birthplace in Cincinnati, Ohio, taught it to military men from various nations across the globe. In order to be a proficient spades player, you have to understand working with your partner. In this trick-taking game, each player or team, with 13 cards in hand in the case of four players or teams, must commit to win a certain number of tricks, which are basically rounds. The ace is the high card, followed by king, queen, jack, all the way down to the deuce. The same thing for hearts, which I have in reverse. The same thing for clubs, and I'll move this ace of clubs over. And of course, spade suit is always trump. Better hope you have some spades in your hand, however, as they act in the trump in this challenging game, meaning they can win a trick over any suit. If you're the first to reach 500 points, congratulations, you've just won spades. There are dozens of different ways to play. It's probably the most popular partnership game in the country right now. Number eight, President, also known as Scum and Asshole. Oh! Are you out? Oh, finish your beer, asshole. Based on a Japanese card game, this fast-paced game is known by many different names, but under any moniker, the objective is to get rid of all your cards before your fellow players by adding the same number of matching cards of a higher value on top of the card played by the dealer at the start of the round. So let's say the dealer plays two fours you'd want to play two fives or higher. Sounds easy, right? If you play your cards right, you will be assigned the title of president after winning the trick. And if not, you could be the vice pres, vice scum, or scum, depending on how you did. Vice president, yes, you saw it here. Card, Woo! But be careful if you choose to play this as a drinking game. Get away from me. Now, uh that this game is over, how about playing some bridge? You play bridge? I play bridge a little. What do you play for? Oh, we just play for small stakes. And french fried potatoes? Number seven, bridge. Set it up right over there, hi. Very good, madam. It's been described as one of the most complex card games in existence, originating in the late 1800s under the Russian name Birich, also known as Russian Whist. One of the more popular partnership card games and card games in general, Bridge is played by two teams of two players who go through four steps in gameplay, dealing the hands, an auction or bidding, playing your cards and scoring the outcome. With dozens of variations, including rubber bridge and duplicate bridge, the most common one in play today is known as contract bridge. I refuse to play any longer. You're nothing but a couple of card sharks. Oh, oh, heavens, what a matter, dear. My shoes are gone. Number six, hearts. With playing games with my heart. A trick-taking game categorized in the Whist family, like Bridge and Spades. Hearts is another game that goes by a variety of labels, like Black Lady, The Dark, Slippery Anne, and more. We're going to start by dealing the cards to four players. This is a game that really requires four players. 
The main difference here is that the objective of hearts is evasion. Players must try not to get certain cards during a round, with the winner amassing the fewest points by the end of the game. That term breaking hearts means that you are now eligible or you're allowed to lead hearts, and if you throw a heart on somebody, that constitutes breaking hearts. With its roots in a popular Spanish game, which rose to prominence around the mid-1700s, hearts remained well-liked through the decades and even found success online. Of course, it really hit its peak when Microsoft included it on Windows-based computers beginning in the 1990s. Cards is a great pastime and a way to have a lot of fun. Enjoy your card playing and keep that smile. Number 5. Cribbage It's wildly popular, especially here at the Abington Senior Center. Why they even have their own cribbonologist? Apparently invented by the English poet Sir John Suckling in the early 1600s, and beloved especially by American submarine crews, this card game has several features that make it unique. The most distinct is perhaps the traditional scoring board, which contains a series of holes, referred to as streets, where a tally of points is kept using small pegs, and players try to reach a specific score, often 121. Each game is played with stages that include the deal, the play, and the show, which are also unique to Crib. At any point during the game, if a player reaches the target score, the round ends and they are the winner. You mean I'm not winning because I'm brilliant? <laughs> Think, mon général. Have you ever won? Number four, Gin Rummy. Yeah. Eight points. You're just a pigeon, Harry. Yeah. yeah. We were very lucky that time, George. I'm just ready to go here. Well, how many you got? 82 points. <laughs> Created in the early 20th century by Elwood T. Baker and his son, the strategy in this fast-paced two-player game is to improve your hand by creating melds and by removing dead wood. So loser! Shut up! Melds are sets of three or four matching cards, like three nines, for example, or a run of three or more successive cards that share the same suit, like the seven, eight, and nine of hearts. Deadwood cards are those one-offs that don't belong in any meld. I discard the king. She's right. <laughs> Jim. Practice all you want, but you'll never be as good at gin as professional card player Stu Unger. He's considered the greatest player ever, who had an almost psychic skill to see his rival's cards. Since I got the six of hearts, you got the eight of hearts. Along with the eight of clubs, the six of clubs, and the seven, let's see, it could be spades or diamonds, I'm not really sure. Not that it would matter in a hand. All right, all right, kid, you made your point. Number three. Solitaire, also known as Patience. Who says you need a partner to have some fun? Probably originating in Scandinavia or Germany, but spreading first to France and then to England and the United States in the 19th century. The game, most often played by a single player, has since become a staple as a computer game. Solitaire? Yeah, free cell. Or six on seven. I know, I saw that. So then why didn't you do it? I'm saving that, because I like it when the cards go... Who doesn't love that? <laughs> Almost like a puzzle, the game sees players trying to arrange stacks of cards by swapping suit colors and going from high to low. Also known as Patience, the first recorded mention of this game dates back to 1783 in a German anthology of games. And it's just as popular today as it was centuries ago. Number two, Blackjack. Jack, plus 12. Nine, still plus 12. Blackjack. Also known as 21, this casino banking game is the most popular of its kind in the world. If he wasn't so f***ing greedy, he'd have been tough for the spot. But in the end, they're all greedy. In a game that pits players versus the dealer, 
The way to win is to get 21 points with your first two cards. Reach a final score higher than the dealer without exceeding 21, or to let the dealer exceed 21. I don't even know you, but I'm gonna tell you that's dumb. Yes! Hey, come on, he can't lose! The first mention of this game was in a Spanish short story written in the early years of the 1600s by Miguel de Cervantes, and has since risen in popularity to the point that there now exists a Blackjack Hall of Fame. I'm gonna double down. Queen. Queen. Yes. yes, sir. I love this town. Before we deal in our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. 300. Go fish. I say bullshit. Mm -hmm. What did she say? I didn't quite hear. Did mm -hmm. you guys, I didn't hear what she said. What I did you said say? Bullshit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> After the lead card is played, an opponent tries to pick a card from their hand with a higher meld value than your lead card. Anyone up for playing old maid? Aren't we? <gasps> I'm in. I'm in. You meld? Yeah. Two decks? Uh-huh. See if you can keep up with me because I have a tendency to play too fast. I know. Number one, poker. Okay, Joey, you're bad. Uh, I fold like a cheap hooker who got hit in the stomach by a fat guy with sores on his face. <laughs> As popular with amateurs as it is with the pros, this is one of the most played betting card games you'll encounter. Whether you've played the original or a variation like Texas Hold'em, all adaptations of poker are challenging, fun, and suspenseful. I flopped the nut straight. Not the with each player betting, folding, or upping the ante based on what he thinks his hand is worth compared to other players. Yeah, I'm gonna go all in because I don't think you got the space. Traveling from its humble origins in New Orleans on riverboats up the Mississippi and on to the Gold Rush era West, this beloved, usually high stakes game has become a cultural phenomenon that involves strategizing and psychology. Just remember to bring your best poker face to the table. Five and seven of spades. The straight flush. Four to the eight. The high hand. Do you agree with our list? What card games do you love playing the most? This is a poker game. You can't serve food with more than one syllable. It's gotta be like chips or dip or pretz. <laughs> For more informative top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Mr. Son of a Beach, let's play some cards.